Hello, and welcome to Scanditech's iPhone 5 screen replacement video. In this video, we'll walk you through how to replace your iPhone 5 screen, show you potential difficulties, and give you general warnings. Please be aware that replacing internal iPhone parts is not a risk-free process, but with this video, we'll do our best to prepare you for the task ahead. Keep in mind that there are many tiny screws inside your iPhone, and most of them are different lengths. Make sure to organize the screws as you remove them, because they need to go back into their respective holes. If parts of this video aren't clear, please take a look at our website, www.scandy.tech, where we have a text image guide with high definition pictures. We at Scandy Tech sell our screens for iPhones in two different setups. The screen with inner parts pre-assembled, and just the standalone screen without inner parts. The inner parts consist of a front camera, ear speaker, and a home button. If you purchase our screen without the inner parts, you could simply remove these parts from your current screen and install them on the new screen. To replace your iPhone 5 screen, you will be needing the following. Phillips PH00 size screwdriver for the internal screws, a pentalobe screwdriver for the bottom screws, a spudger, and or a plastic opening tool, a set of tweezers, and preferably a suction cup. If you have purchased our full screen replacement kit, all of these tools will be included. Begin by turning off your iPhone. If your LCD or touch screen isn't working, you can turn off the phone by holding the power button and the home button for about seven seconds. If you hold it for too long, the phone will reboot and you will need to repeat this step. Once the phone is switched off, we'll remove the two bottom screws next to the charging port. Now we'll have to separate the front assembly from the back assembly. This step can be a bit difficult, especially if you're doing it for the first time. It's important to do it slowly and carefully. The front assembly is held tightly by the metal back assembly. The front assembly is connected to the motherboard with three cables in the top right corner, so we can only lift the screen to a 90 degree angle without damaging these cables. To separate the front assembly, Apply the suction cup at the bottom part of the screen if your glass is intact. The suction cup needs a smooth surface. If your glass is broken, the suction cup might not latch on. In this case, you can either apply scotch tape or plastic film to the broken area to create a smooth surface. An alternative way to separate the front from the back is to insert one end of the tweezers between the plastic frame of the front assembly and the metal back cover and carefully lever the screen up. Insert the tweezers just to the right of the speaker holes. The phone's headphone jack connector is on the left side and could get damaged by the tweezers if you insert it too far to the left. Inserting the tweezers might leave a small mark on your back assembly. Sometimes the glue that's holding the glass panel has softened. In these cases, proceed by prying the plastic frame loose with the tweezers. Let's insert the tweezers and carefully pry the screen up. Once you have a tiny opening, insert the plastic opening tool and slide it slowly down the side of the phone. We'll now lift the screen to a 90 degree angle. Keep holding it with one hand until we can safely remove it. Pay attention to the three cables connecting the screen to the motherboard. Make sure there's no tension on these cables or they could tear. You could also secure the screen against a solid object with a rubber band or have someone else hold it, but make sure there's no tension on the cables. These cables are controlling the LCD, touchscreen, and front camera with the application microphone and proximity sensor. If the cables tear, these parts will no longer work and will need to be replaced. We'll now disconnect the battery. To do that, the battery connector's metal plate needs to be removed, then we can safely disconnect the connector. Go ahead and remove the two screws holding the metal plate. Use tweezers to lift the metal plate and place it next to the screws. Once the metal plate is out of the way, Disconnect the battery's connector. Use your plastic spudger and come in from the right side and carefully lever the connector up. Make sure not to damage the socket underneath. We'll now move on to disconnect the front screen's connectors. Begin by removing the metal shield. The top right screw is, in most cases, not magnetized, and you may need to use the tweezers to remove it. This screw is also longer than the other two screws holding the shield. It's crucial that this long screw is put back in the correct hole when reassembling the phone. 
The metal shield is held in place with fish hooks and needs to be lifted with an angle. Make sure you organize the screws as you remove them. If you put back the wrong screw in the wrong hole, it may damage the phone. Proceed to disconnect the front assembly's connectors. Use your plastic spudger for this step. We begin with the rightmost connector. Come in from the right side and gently pry the connector up by levering your spudger against the metal back assembly without putting any pressure on sensitive components. This is the front camera flex cable. This cable controls the front camera, the proximity sensor, and the application microphone, which is used when doing voice recordings, video recordings, or using various conversation apps, such as Skype. Up next is the LCD connector. This connector only controls the LCD. Pry it up by levering against the metal shield without damaging any nearby components. Finally, we have the touchscreen connector. Disconnect this connector by resting your spudger on the top of the flexes on the left side, then go underneath the touchscreen connector. Now you have disconnected the screen from the phone. If your new screen came pre-assembled with the inner parts like this screen, you simply have to connect it to the motherboard. We suggest skipping forward in the video and we'll show you proper technique. For those of you who have not purchased a screen with the inner parts pre-assembled, like this screen, we'll show you how to remove these parts from your original screen and install them onto your new front assembly. Before we continue, I'd like to say that when reconnecting the new screen, it's crucial to get the connectors perfectly aligned. If they're even slightly out of place, your new screen will either not show a picture or it will have visible bars or lines on the LCD. The touchscreen might also not react as it should if the connector is out of place. If you're experiencing any of these issues, please go back to the step, disconnect your front assembly, and then reconnect it carefully. It's important not to rush it or to use too much force as the sockets and motherboard can be damaged. Once again, we'll show the correct techniques to connect the screen further ahead in this video. Let's focus on removing the small parts from the old screen and installing them onto the new unit. We begin by removing the metal shield holding the ear speaker and the front camera. Make sure you keep your screws organized as they're all different sizes. Proceed by lifting off the metal shield, then the ear speaker. After the ear speaker, we remove the front camera flex. This part is sometimes held in place with soft glue and you need to come under it with the tweezers. Then pry it up carefully. Make sure it doesn't tear. Once the part is loose, lift the mic from its rubber gasket. We'll now remove the LCD metal shield. It's held in place with six screws. One at the top, two on each long side, and one at the bottom. The four screws on the long sides are the same size, but the top and bottom screw are both different lengths. Proceed by removing the screws. Once the screws are out, the LCD metal plate can be lifted off. If it's stuck, insert the tweezers between the metal rail and the LCD plate. Next, we remove the home button's metal shield, then the home button flex, and finally, the plastic home button. The home button's flex is sometimes glued to the plastic frame. Use your tweezers to carefully pry it loose. The plastic button is easily removed by pressing it with your finger. The outer edges of the home button's rubber gasket have a soft adhesive to keep the button in place. Try not to touch this area as it will soften the adhesive. All of the inner parts are now stripped from the old screen. Let's install them on the new screen in a similar fashion as we remove them. We begin with the home button and its metal shield. If there's a film on your new screen, remove it. Take the home button and put it into place. Flip the screen to make sure the home button square is aligned well. The placement of the square has no effect on the functionality of the button. 
this is only a visual feature. Put the home button flex with the metal shield on top of the plastic button and screw it down. Make sure the home button's flex is flat against the plastic frame. Flip your screen again and press the home button a couple of times just to confirm that it reacts well. After the home button, it's time to put the LCD metal shield back in place. Make sure the black hole goes to the top and the small metal pieces to the bottom. If the metal shield doesn't fall into place right away, assist it with the tweezers to get it in between the metal rails on the sides of the screen. Put the screws back. Keep in mind the longest screw goes at the top. Now we'll install the front camera flex. This part can be difficult to get into place and it doesn't always stick to the plastic frame. Its small sensors need to fall into their assigned holes in the metal frame if these frames are assembled on your screen. Not all front assemblies have these frames, but if yours has them, try to fit the front camera flex into it. If you're having difficulties with this part, you may remove the frames. The frames are glued to the front assembly and can be removed with minor force using the tweezers. The front camera flex will work fine with the frames removed. Install the front camera flex by pressing the mic into the rubber gasket with your finger. Then, fold the rest of the flex over the mic and have the camera fall into its frame. Keep it in place with one finger. Now the sensors need to find their way into the frame as well. Guide the part with your finger until you feel it slip into place. Assemble the ear speaker on top of the front camera flex. Make sure the ear speaker's little springs are in contact with the front camera flex. The ear speaker screw holes should fall right on top of the screw holes on the metal shield. If the ear speaker is a bit flimsy, use the tweezers to adjust it or to hold it in position. Grab the metal shield and place it on top of the ear speaker. Secure the metal shield with two screws. The longest screw goes in the top hole. Now we have a fully assembled screen with all the inner parts installed. We can go ahead and connect it to the phone. If you ordered a screen with the inner parts pre-assembled, this is how your screen will come out of the box. Now comes the most delicate part of the replacement process. The new screen's connectors need to be connected to their respective sockets on the motherboard. The connectors are fragile and can tear, therefore they should be handled with care. If the flex cable tears or if the connectors get damaged, the screen will no longer work and needs to be replaced. We obviously want to avoid this, so take your time during the next steps. If the sockets on the motherboard get damaged, that's even worse. These sockets are difficult to replace even for skilled repair shops. Be careful and move slowly without applying too much force. Align the screen's first connector, which controls the touchscreen, and connects it to the motherboard. Begin pressing the connector from one end, then slide your finger across it until it's fully connected. This step can be difficult to master and may take several tries until you get it right. When the connector attaches to its socket, a soft click will be heard. Slide your finger across it once again to make sure it's connected all the way. Sometimes, the connector feels like it's connected even though it's slightly out of place. If you're experiencing touch issues once you have started your phone, go back to this step and disconnect, then reconnect the touchscreen connector. Next up is the LCD connector. Connect it the same way as you did with the touchscreen connector. The LCD connector is a bit smaller and usually easier to attach than the previous connector. Once again, a soft click noise is heard when the connector latches onto its socket. Finally, we connect the front camera connector. This is the rightmost connector of the three. Try to align it with its socket and then carefully press it down. As with the two previous connectors, it can be challenging getting it into place and then connecting it to the phone. Keep trying until it snaps into place. Put the metal cover in place. Begin with the fish hooks on its left side. When the plate's left side is secured, hold the plate with one finger while fastening the screws. Make sure you put the longest screw in the top right hole.
Connect the battery's connector to the phone. Now we can start the phone to make sure the screen, touch, and front camera are all working. You may let the front assembly rest on top of the back assembly without pressing them together while you test the screen. Once the phone has booted up, move your finger across the screen to make sure the touch works well. If everything is in order, switch off your phone. If the LCD, touch, or front camera aren't working as they should, go back a few steps, disconnect, then reconnect the front assembly connectors. We're almost done. Screw fasten the battery connector's metal shield with its two screws. Finally, we'll assemble the front assembly with the back assembly. The front assembly's top side has small hooks, which need to latch onto the back assembly. Hold the top of the front assembly adjacent to the top of the back assembly while gently pressing them together. Then, lower the front assembly. When the plastic frame of the front assembly is aligned with the metal back assembly, press them carefully together from top to bottom. If your phone has been dropped, the back assembly can be a bit skewed and it might make it a bit more challenging to assemble the phone. You may assist with the tweezers or lift the screen again and give it another try. Keep in mind that when you're dealing with a part that is made out of glass, you can only bend it so much. If the part appears to be stuck, lift it at a 90 degree angle and try it again. The small notches on the side will snap into the back assembly as you go along. Once both sides and the bottom part of the screen are secured into the back assembly, we only have two screws left. The bottom screws are of the same size and have a pantalobe head. Use the small pantalobe screwdriver to screw them fasten. Pick them up with your fingers, the tweezers, or use a magnetic screwdriver. Your phone should now be in one piece with a new screen. Sometimes the time and date are restored to factory default and need to be adjusted. The best way of doing so is to let your phone connect to a Wi-Fi network and it will automatically synchronize the time and date if you have that setting enabled. If you're having trouble with any of the steps in this video, please go to our website www.scandy.tech and read our text image guide. This text image guide shows the entire process but from a slightly different angle. We at Scanditech hope that the repair has been a success and that your new screen is working well. Thanks for watching.